Hi, I'm Terrell Turner, the host of The Law and Finance Show. And today we're going to have a very great topic because one of the things that a lot of businesses really have a challenge with is managing contracts. And I even remember when I was working with, you know, different corporations or different companies, even some of my clients that are law firms or some of the non-law firm clients, managing contracts is it's a very necessary part of running a successful business. But it's not always the easiest or the most convenient or the most flowing process. So we have a guest that has a lot of experience in that area. And we're going to talk about some of the things that are he's doing and some of the things that the company he's working with, they're doing to really help companies when it comes down to managing contracts. So stay tuned for today's episode. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Colin. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, before we jump into the details of, you know, contract management, contract management solutions that are available, tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. So uh, I've been an in-house lawyer now for over a decade. Uh, Most of that work has been focused in-house, working for a range of different companies. Uh, And one of the major areas of focus in my career has been on contracts and corporate transactions. So uh, now currently working for a company that makes a contract management solution uh, is definitely um, an area I know well. Uh, And frankly, the tool is one that I wish I had years ago when I was working. It would have made uh, my life certainly easier and less stressful. uh, And I would have been able to be more productive uh, with respect to the work that I was doing. Awesome. Awesome. Now, when you talk about, you know, in-house kind of legal counsel and stuff, when you decided to, you know, pursue your career path, was this an aim for you or was this something that an opportunity opened up and you, you know, you just continued to pursue it? So that's a good question. Uh, And it's not a necessarily short uh, answer. Uh, Prior to law school, uh, I had worked for a firm in New York uh, that was focused on, um, you know, it's a big, big law firm. And my work was focused on creating uh, e-discovery databases for the lawyers. Um, and so that was my first exposure to technology. And that exposure kind of piqued my interest in technology and its relationship to the practice of law. Uh, so when I got to law school, you know, there was very little talk about technology by and large, and that was a bit disappointing, but that interest in technology remained with me. So when I graduated from law school and started to actually work, I kind of wanted to learn more about technology and about people that were trying to either use technology to be more productive as attorneys or were teaching law students how to use tech tools, or frankly, were even focused on creating tech tools for lawyers or other legal professionals. And so it was through that sort of journey of exploration that led me to uh, really developing kind of a, a pretty robust interest in legal tech and talking about it, writing about it. Uh, and so I feel like the job I have now is sort of a combination of all of that work and that experience and, and that journey. Uh, so while it may not have necessarily been the specific job I had in mind throughout my legal career, it definitely makes sense to be where I am now. And I'm really incredibly happy to have the opportunity that I have now to be doing what I'm doing. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Now, one of the things that I'm curious to is, you know, for your perspective of being, you know, in-house legal counsel and working on that side of things, when you have, you know, talked to other companies or talked to other peers, do you, do you find that a lot of companies grasp the value of having the in-house legal counsel? Yes. So I do think that most companies by and large are grasping or already do grasp the value of having in-house counsel that can understand their business and work with with them and be responsive. Uh, I do think there is, however, a tendency still to sometimes question exactly how much value in-house counsel can bring. 
Uh, but I think that perspective is changing uh, in part due to the rise of more technologies that allow lawyers, particularly in-house lawyers, but also law firm lawyers to show their value and be more attuned to the needs of their clients in terms of delivering legal services. Hmm. Awesome. Now, one of the areas that I've seen with, you know, some of the companies that I've worked with from, you know, Fortune 500, you know, $25 billion plus company sizes down to, you know, smaller startups that were, you know, going through M&A activity is how much my support from the finance interacted with the legal counsel. So in in your capacity and, and what you've seen, have you seen a lot of different departments um, really lean on the in-house legal counsel? So, you know, it's an interesting question. I would say over the course of my career, uh, there have been varied degrees to which other functions have relied on or uh, asked for or depended on uh, the legal function to, to help. Uh, earlier in my career, legal function was pretty much in a, in a silo and kind of just interacted with other functions on sort of this ad hoc basis. Uh, but then as my career progressed uh, and I worked in different departments, it became clear that there was a shift undergoing where the legal role in-house was being more one that was cross-functional and really working more collaboratively with other functions. And there was a desire to have everyone kind of be at the table at the same time working on things uh, together. Um, and so I, I think that's still ongoing. Uh, but certainly, uh, it's something that I think is is ever more important for in-house counsel, um, which is to be more collaborative, be more cross-functional, and really lean on learning from these other functions and working in, in a manner in which to kind of push things along forward in a way that um, allows everyone to be on the same page at each step of the way. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now, what are the areas, as you mentioned, that, that being on that same page that I've seen a lot of companies kind of struggle with is that whole contracting process. I mean, where, you know, the sales team or I guess the, the marketing team started marketing, the sales team starts developing a relationship and where from a finance standpoint, where I've seen a lot of issues happen, whereas, you know, the sales team, where is the handoff happen between, hey, we presented the contract, you know, did we get all the signatures? And then also, you know, where is the contract now with people being on the same page? You know, what has been your experience of like, you know, some of the learning lessons or observations you've seen where companies that either struggle with that whole contracting process? Yeah. So I think a lot of the struggle stems from the initial just talking about a deal where you've got someone with an interested party in doing a deal with your company and they're kind of talking about the various pieces of the deal are, you know, what do you want from us? You know, how much we have to pay you, you know, how long do we want this to last for all those sorts of types of things. And part of the problem is all that gets talked about. Um, and then legal gets brought in to say, Hey, we're doing this deal. Can you, you know, draft the agreement and, uh, and then we'll handle the rest of it. And, and really that's sort of, I would say a traditional way that contracting has been done in companies. And that's problematic because you're working in various silos, you know, finance does their part, legal does their part. Um, the sales folks do their part. And then they kind of all just hope that the document itself, the contract reflects all these different conversations that have happened. And I think that's a very inefficient way of doing contracting. And also it can lead to problems down the line in terms of, well, this contract doesn't necessarily reflect everything that I thought it was going to reflect. And then there's kind of, all right, well, whose fault is that? And, and it, it kind of just leaves a bad taste sometimes in people's mouths that, you know, this deal is not exactly as well thought out or as well constructed as one would think. And the way to get around that, the way to kind of make that better really is through a collaborative process where all the parties involved, finance, procurement, sales, legal, are all talking about the deal from the get-go before the contract is even drafted and then working together to draft the deal terms, negotiate it, execute it, and then implement it. And technology, of course, can help with every step of this contract lifecycle process. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, when it comes down to the types of contracts that, you know, that, that you've 
had experience with, you know, where does that range from? Are they just kind of internal, whether it's supplier contracts, customer contracts, is it M&A activity or what types of contracts have you had the most experience with? So most of the types of contracts I've dealt with have been uh, business to business contracts. So, you know, one business wants to buy services from another or data or, or basically a business is purchasing something from another business. Uh, and a lot of that has been focused in the technology space. So usually it's a technology tool of some sort or some sort of data analysis tool or what have you. And so, you know, as technology has evolved, so the contracts in terms of their complexity, in terms of the various requirements that companies have with respect to their vendors and what they're expecting and what they what level of support they want. Uh, so that's been the primary focus of my contracting experience uh, is on technology agreements uh, that are business to business. Now, as you've kind of navigated that, you know, your own journey from, you know, where contracting process and managing contracting processes have been, you know, have you seen a lot change in the technology space to just make that process more efficient? Yeah, absolutely. The technology definitely has changed quite a bit. Um, You know, originally, you know, the focus was on kind of just digital signatures, you know, just tools to allow parties that electronically sign agreements. Well, now that's just sort of a, a given. What we're now seeing is there are tools that allow you to control and manage every single part of the life cycle of the agreement, talking from sort of initial drafting of the deal terms, drafting of the agreement, negotiating the agreement, uh, to reviewing it, to signing it, to implementing it. And technology now can help with each step of that process in one platform. And I think we're, you know, technology is continuing to move in that direction in terms of one platform being able to offer all these different services in one. And I think now we're kind of on the cusp of seeing tools that can take things even a step further and allow you to um, drive analytics and data-driven decision-making based on the basis of agreements that you've done before um, and, and ones that you would tend to do in the future. And so really, I think the contract life cycle management space continues to generate a great deal of uh, interest, both from investors and from um, buyers because of the fact that they realize how powerful these tools are becoming and how incredibly necessary they are becoming to managing a contracting space that is becoming increasingly complex and interdependent. You know, and I think that's amazing because, you know, even as you were talking about just the changes, I, I remember like my first job out of college where, you know, I was working at an accounting firm and we were, we had some other company come in. There was an agreement that we needed to get signed. And after they left and they were headed to the airport, I just remember like running out, chasing down a taxi because there was a page that didn't get signed. (laughs) So I'm just like, you know what? I'm so glad that the advancements have have really, really happened and, and really, really seen things evolve. I mean, that is amazing to hear. So you know, for the, you know, the, the company that you're with now, I mean, when it comes down to kind of the solutions and, you know, the, you know, the, the efficiencies that you've seen from the processes that you guys offer, you know, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So, so Malbec is the company I work for, not the wine. We all make wine. Uh, we make contract go <laughs> management software. Uh, and really what we do is we, uh, our software allows for all these different functions, sales, procurement, finance, legal, to work collaboratively through the same platform to manage the entire life cycle of, of, of an agreement. You know, we allow you to negotiate the agreement, draft the agreement, review, you know, suppose you're getting third party paper and it's not on your part, on your party's paper. Our, our, t- our tool allows you to review that agreement and it will tell you kind of where there may be problematic clauses that perhaps need some negotiation. It can even offer you, you know, providing you have the right template and the right data. We can even offer you alternative language to potentially use when negotiating. And then so on, we offer, you know, integrations that allow to track sort of the signing of agreements and track the implementation as well as kind of other things like when payments are due, uh, when it's time to renew an agreement and so on. And so really it's such a collaborative, intuitive platform. And that's the beauty of, of what Malbec offers is that it's a contract management solution that really allows for all these different functions to work together collaboratively and seamlessly and off of the same 
document and not have to kind of flip paper back and forth, which sometimes can get messy because then you're wondering, well, whose draft is this? You know, does this have your comments in it? Yes, no, maybe, I don't know. You know, that, that can get very messy and can slow down, frankly, the deal cycle. Uh, and that's, that. it's not necessary to operate that way. There's, you know, Malbec offers a way to work that's in a more collaborative, productive way. Um, and that's part, one of the reasons why I'm so happy to work for them. Awesome. You know, and, and that, that is an, an amazing, you know, advancement because I remember in working for, you know, a, it was a Fortune 500 company to where there was a manufacturing deal that was trying to go through where, the process got delayed by two weeks because, you know, different parties had different versions, which caused the production line to have to temporarily shut down to where it's just like that was a very big headache um, and cost the company a lot of money because they didn't have a solution like that. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly right. I mean, frankly, uh, contracting can get very messy, it can get very problematic when you don't have uh the proper tools in place to track every step of the way and so certainly you know i've been involved in deals where there's been so much email back and forth of various drafts it's been hard to keep track of and sometimes it gets so messy that then you're wondering are right, is this actually the supposed clean version or not um and it shouldn't be that way it doesn't have to be that way with tools like mallback that can allow you to work in a more collaborative manner that allows for better tracking of each step and allows for better versioning of, of various agreements. And so you don't run into that issue of tracking down different drafts and trying to figure out which one is the latest version. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, that, that makes sense. And, you know, one of the questions that I'm curious about is, you know, and, and we don't have to go into too much detail about this, but um, when it comes down to sharing documents, one of the questions that comes up about, you know, the, the security and the privacy of like kids, with a electronic version of sharing documents is in the tool, do you have the ability to limit who can see what in the documents? Well, you know, that's one of the beauties of, of these tools, including Malbex is uh, the ability to secure and set permissions in terms of who can see what, who can edit what, who can make changes, who can download, who can send along or, or push things along. So certainly security is a, is a major uh, priority for, for Malbec in terms of allowing for the security of, of the documents as well as securing who can access them and the data within those agreements as well. Awesome. Awesome. So when it comes down to the Malbec tool, you know, what are some of the types of companies or customers that are utilizing the software solution? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, our, our customers range from some of the largest and most well-known companies uh, out there. I can't necessarily name uh, all of them specifically, but but some of them are extremely well-known in the media space and technology space and the healthcare space. Uh, and mainly it's, you know, a, a matter of these large legal departments realizing that in order for them to get a handle on their contracting processes and contracting function, they need to be able to do so in a way that is collaborative, in a way that is more transparent, particularly in this era of remote working where you've got people working in all different places in different time zones, and you want to be able to kind of work collaboratively, but without having to kind of wait for someone to get back to you with an email response to something. Instead, you can just go into the system, work, work in it, leave a comment or do whatever you need to do. And then the next person can see what you've done and work um, on their timing uh, from there. So that's, that's really, I think one of the beauties of, of a tool like Malbec, and that's why we attract the types of customers we do, is allowing for that kind of seamless uh, collaboration. Awesome, awesome. And you know, it's one of those things that I'm always excited, like I said, to have conversations like these, because I just think about some of the nightmare experiences that I've had throughout my career. I, I think in, there was one particular um, company that I was working at, Fortune 500 company again, and we were trying to trying to sell off um trying to sell off some 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 properties that the company had owned and it was a nightmare trying to track down the original contracts <laughs> and i mean because everything was hard copy and it's like no one knew where it was and you had multiple people that it went through the role so it's always exciting to hear like the, the advancement in areas of like contracting because that's not an area you see advertise, you know, abundantly as much as you do the other tools, but it is an essential tool that businesses need. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I do think that more and more attention is being paid to this uh, space primarily because of that reason, among others, in terms of being able to just find documents, be able to find which agreements have been signed. And, you know, sometimes you may be like, well, yeah, I use this one clause in this one agreement. I don't remember when I did it, but I know it was with, I think, this company. Let me see if I can find it. You know, you want to, you don't want to spend your time, spend a lot of time doing that. You want to be able to just find that quickly, find that language and move forward. And so, you know, that's, that's a big reason why people are attracted to these types of tools is allowing for the speeding up of that type of task, which is fairly routine, but can be time consuming sometimes. Awesome. Now, if people are interested in, you know, learning a little bit more about the company and also, you know, some seeing some of the posts that you share on LinkedIn about the subject matter, how can they find, what do they search for when they're looking for you on LinkedIn? Sure. Absolutely. They can look for me, Colin Levy. That's how they can find me on, on LinkedIn. Uh, they can also find me under uh, C Levy underscore law on Twitter. And as you can say, you know, Malbec is the name of the company, M-A-L-B-E-K. And they can go to www.malbec.io. Uh, and that is where you can find more about our company, which I suggest you doing so if you have a, a need for uh, contract management. Awesome. I love it. Well, before we wrap up, one of the questions that I love asking every guest that comes on is when you think about your journey, you think about your experience. You know, what's two lessons that you've learned that you would share? And it could be two things that are something you've said before that you want to reiterate, or it could be two completely new things. Sure. So one is tech related, uh, which is uh, when you're interested in trying to find an, a tech tool, start with understanding your people and your processes first before turning to your tech. You really want to understand the lay of the land. You want to understand how your people work. You want to understand what your existing processes are and use that understanding to to drop to uh, direct your search uh, for a tech tool. You don't want to be searching for you don't want to have a tool in search of a problem. Basically, you want to have a you want to have a solution to an existing known problem. Uh, and then the other lesson I would say is with respect to kind of just, you know, your individual journey is life is unpredictable. Your career is unpredictable. You may have a plan for how you would like things to go, but the likelihood is it's not necessarily going to be as you intend intend for it to be so you have to be flexible be adaptable and experiment and sometimes feel free to you know try something new that you have an interest in but you're not sure um if you really want to be doing it or not because that's how you learn and that's how you grow is by challenging yourself and your assumptions awesome well colin thank you so much for being an amazing guest and thank you for coming on the show thank you so much it's been a pleasure you just checked out the Law and Finance Show, where we bring you great, insightful interviews that talk about the business and the financial side of managing a law firm. So subscribe to the show and check out more of the great interviews.